If you are watching on a high def, I have to wait until this actually broadcasts because it is being recorded live. So I'm just well, watch me wait. May do me a favor while you're waiting. <clears throat> Make sure you check out uh, the charity connection. I'm raising money for Dana Mobley Christ. Uh, she has lung cancer. And she is somebody who is trying to help many, many people throughout her charity, and now she needs our help. So make sure you go to the charity connection. And if you want to know who I am and what in the world it is that I do, I need you to wait just a moment longer while Google decides to let me do this. Now it wants me to wait another 10 seconds. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, which you can see at themediaspeaks.com. Um, it's spring cleaning, three days in a row. If, you, if you're new to the show, do me a favor. Look up uh, 6, uh, 12, 13th, and 14th of 2013, and you will find that there are three two-hour broadcasts. It's being done live. I guess everything's being done live at some point, or it wouldn't have been done at all. But it is currently being done live, as in on TheMediaSpeaks.com. For those of you that don't know what spring cleaning is, I am going through <clears throat> all of my bookmarks, all of the articles that I have wanted to get to, be they old or new, and for whatever reason, I wasn't able to get to it. Well, getting to it now. I'm going to start off with something incredibly odd. Mail Online, a side dish of maggots with supermarket meat. Livestock to be fed larvae reared on cow and pig excrement in the EU trial to meet raising, dem raising demands for meat. This doesn't necessarily bother me as much. I mean, a chickens eat maggots. I think a cow can probably live off of maggots. Uh, the point is, it makes you wonder... Oh, you know, maybe maybe it's a lot more complicated. I'm sure uh, than just a, a cow being, a, you know, not made to eat such wonderful delicacies. I don't know. I mean, I to some degree the obviously yuck, the obvious yuck factor is really high, but it can't be worse than what's in Chicken McNuggets, which is anything but chicken. Look up the pink slime. Um, I'm going to read this though because for whatever it stood out as one that I could not get rid of. And for those of you that want all the political stuff that I normally do, don't worry about it. We will make sure that we have tons and tons of political stuff. KP Kyle Phillips is with us. Oh, very nice. I heard the applause and uh, the technician on a mission. Uh, are you able to talk? Yeah, can you hear me okay? I can hear you wonderfully. Welcome aboard. Wonderfully. Uh, how you doing? I got your message saying that you're going online, so I figured I'd join you. I'm, 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 I'm about. I'm gonna go to sleep in about an hour, hour and a half. But uh, I saw Sam online, and I had to get on. That is absolutely freaking awesome. I'm about to get into this wonderful idea they have, Kyle. Um, they want to start feeding larvae. Uh, livestock, and we're going to start feeding larvae to livestock. Do you think this is going to be, let me call this up before I start reading the article, I can actually see you. Do you think this is going to be a dreadful idea, or do you think it's something that might work? I mean, it, 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 is it, is, I mean, chickens eat it. Wait, they're talking about feeding larvae to livestock? Like, what kind of livestock? Listen to this. It is hardly the most appetizing of prospects, but it could just be the only viable way to satisfy the ever-increasing global demand for meat. A plan to feed animals with protein-rich maggots, which have been reared on cow and pig excrement, is currently being charlied by the EU. It says soya beans, which are normally used to feed for, used as feed for animals such as chickens, pigs, and fish, are in great demand, so scientists and farmers have been searching for a cheap and viable alternative. And uh, if you, it's in the dailymail.co.uk. Um, I'm going to read a tiny bit more of it. I don't know, do you think, Kyle, this is a nightmare or not? The EU plan would see flies bred on industrial scale using available using readily available animal and vegetable waste with the maggots or larvae which they create then being used for feed. Uh, last thing I want to read. The type of waste... So, 
Go ahead. So, so animal waste, animal uh, byproducts, animal uh, runoff, and then uh, larvae are going to be fed to uh, livestock that we eat, like beef, you know, cattle. Yes. In order... Actually, I would have... I'm okay with that. I have no problem with that unless... The problem that I have is that when livestock and other things... See, it's it's not like they're just going to be feeding direct larvae to a cow because a cow wouldn't eat it, right? So mm -hmm. what they're going to end up doing is they're going to end up grinding up and putting this larvae into uh, cow, pig, whatever feed. The, the question that I have is are they going to take the time to specify to make sure that within this larvae slash whatever feed, that cows aren't eating cows, that pigs aren't eating pigs. Oh, I hadn't thought of that, yeah. are eating chickens, because that's the bigger issue to me. Cows eating larvae, not a problem to me. I know a lot of survivalists who eat larvae. They're actually really high in protein. But the problem I have is how are they going to differentiate between the mixed feed that gets feed fed animal to animal, because... When cow gets fed cow or pig gets fed pig, pig, that's when you have an issue. That's when you see serious problems. Uh, let me see if it addresses that. It doesn't use it. Yeah, it doesn't at all. It's, that's almost all of it. Uh, it says the Grant Bait Fishing Bait Farm in Roos, East Yorkshire, Yorkshire, has been tasked with finding the best way to produce maggots on an industrial scale. Oh, it's a bait farm. It's somebody who produces bait for fish. <laughs> that I, 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 was, I was talking about stories that just would not leave, and as I delete it from my bookmarks, that is one of the ones that absolutely stuck with me. Guys, we are joined by Kyle Phillips. I'm going to go to one of the uh, newer stories that I have, since we're talking about food. We'll stick with it for a second. Have you heard what has happened with the McDonald's? No, what's happening with McDonald's, Sam? Mail Online, Leela Gababy flashes... Well, that's, that's not the link that's... Supposed. Mail Online has so many ads that if you hit the wrong thing, you immediately end up with pop-ups everywhere for the most insane... All right, here we go. Natural News, McDonald's closing all restaurants in Bolivia as the nation rejects fast food. Hell yeah. Gone. Because you know what? And I'll be the first one to admit to it. I'll be the first one to say that, you know what? I eat fast food. Me I too. eat Burger King. I, 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 I avoid McDonald's. I'll eat it occasionally if it's the closest thing or if I have no other option. But I eat McDonald's. I eat Taco Bell. I eat Wendy's. Everybody does. And the reason that I eat it, why, is because sometimes it's just the easiest way to eat. And let's be real. There used to be this old saying, right, that if you have, uh, specifically for families, that uh, it's cheaper to buy groceries to feed a family. That isn't true anymore. Exactly. You try and feed a family of four, which is the average family, a wife, a husband, a son and a daughter, or two sons or two son daughters, whatever it is, you try and feed that entire family on a $20 bill, uh, good fucking luck, and I hope that you do it because it's a great thing to do, but you you can't. The, you can only feed a family of four on a $20 bill at McDonald's. Ramen, no noodles, ramen noodles get awful old, yes. And I lived off of fast food when I drove taxi because I made almost nothing doing it. It was a nightmare. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was... But if, but if fast food wasn't available, and if you were able to... Well, I, I shouldn't say able, because you're always able to. You, you always had the option. But <clears throat> if the option wasn't there to where you... Right now, you have two choices. You can go home, make a meal that's something healthy, and consume that. And that's going to cost you probably six, eight, ten, twelve dollars $12. Or you can go to McDonald's for 6 bucks. Mm -hmm. If that McDonald's option of six bucks wasn't even there, you'd have a lot more people going home and cooking meals for their families and spending that extra dollar or so to actually make something that's healthy for the people they care about. And I, I'm sure you, uh, you'd probably agree with this. It's not that 
you know, we're against people eating cheeseburgers. It's that there's no meat in these cheeseburgers. It's that they've cut so many costs now that it's not a matter that you're eating uh, ground beef. You're probably not eating ground beef. And if you are, yeah, you're eating exactly. very little. Because all of us at the media speaks, I, I can't speak for everybody else, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that they all agree with me that we're all beef eaters. We eat, mm -hmm. we eat, oh, we yeah. eat, yeah. we eat. But when you go to McDonald's and you get a double cheeseburger, that's like 90% soy and 10% whatever the fuck else that you don't know. It's not meat. Have it's, you seen the pink slime? Small percentage. Have I seen what? The pink slime. Oh yeah, I have seen the pink sludge. The pink oh, it's a sludge. sludge that it's produced from. They literally take the shittiest of the shitty meat, the stuff that not only you wouldn't buy it from a store, but the stuff that like cattle and whatnot won't even eat. And they grind it up into a pink sludge. And when you buy a hamburger, well, there's a percentage of that gross, disgusting. It, it's literally sludge. It's all of the crappiest meat ground up so fine that they can just pour it out from a tube. And if you've ever heard the phrase, don't eat the food that comes from the pipe, well, pink sludge comes from a pipe. <laughs> it, it, it's... It's odd that more people, too, don't, don't know about it. I didn't know a lot of the McRib stuff that I'd read. Now, it's in here. I'd read it a little more prior. But basically, the indigenous people of Bolivia don't want it. Um, and th this, was, this was an interesting... Uh, this, I think this says a lot, too. Um, what, what, what they did to the... Basically, they took over... The, they tried to move into the country. And then... There it is. One indigenous woman, Ether Choki, Choku, C H O Q U E, waiting for a bus to arrive outside a McDonald's restaurant, said, quote, The closest I ever came one day was when the rain shower fell and I climbed the steps to keep dry by the door. They came out and shooed me away. They said I was dirtying the place up, so why would I care if McDonald's leaves Bolivia? Um, the McRib. I can't even pronounce it, Kyle. It looks like azor carbonamide. It's a flower bleaching agent used in producing foam plastic. It says McRibs are basically restructured meat technology, just like Kyle just said. Containing a mixture of tripe, is it tripe stomach, heart, and scalded stomach. What's the difference between tripe and scalded stomach? Yeah, I, the tripe is, it, tripe is sheep's stomach. Oh, so sheep's stomach, okay. It says proteins are extracted from this muscle mixture and they bind the pork trimmings together so that they can be molded in a factory. The McRib is merely just, really just a molded blob of restructured meat advertised and sold as fresh ribs. Wow. Well, you, you know what, Sam? Maybe this effort by the, the corporate elite, the people who control our food, McDonald's, you know, uh, Monsanto... Maybe this is going to work against them because I've read a lot of information about what meat you should eat and what you shouldn't. And it turns out that the meat that our ancient ancestors, I'm talking cavemen, <clears throat> when cavemen back in the day would slaughter an animal, the, the, um, the, the main one, the, the, what's the word that I'm looking for, the alpha, the alpha of whatever pack of animals would would come after an animal and kill it. The alpha was the one who ate all the organs. Because the organs, and this isn't something that, that they understood, and this is something that goes even if you look at tigers, if you look at, at any primitive animal right now, the alpha wolves the same thing. Al the alpha eats the organs, the alpha eats the lungs, the heart, all that. And, and it turns out, according to health experts, that the organ meat is actually the more healthy meat. The organ meat is actually what we're supposed to eat. We've just been conditioned to eat the muscle meat because muscle meat, it's, it's not bad for you, but it's not as good for you as the organ meat. So maybe them getting to a point where they're willing to sell us anything. You know what? If I get a burger from McDonald's and it's 90%, who knows what the fuck, and 10% meat, if I can change that from 90% who knows what it is and 10% meat to 80% who knows what it is, 10% organ meat, 
and 10% meat, I'd rather have that than what we have now because at least I know organ meat is, is, is good for you. Have you ever eaten like the heart that comes in like turkey and that? My dad used to cook them. I haven't. I know people who do. In fact, I don't very I, often. Maybe once or twice a year at the most. I know people who, when they come to Thanksgiving, they say, "Give me the heart and the neck." And I know people like that. And and, and as much as it, it sounds gross to eat the heart of an animal, but realistically, the heart of the animal is the best, most nutritious, most vital part. If you were an animal out in nature, uh, you know, existing purely on instinct. That's the part that you would go for. That's the part with the most nutrition. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's something I think that maybe a lot of people did not know before hearing it here. That's a very good point. I knew that it was healthy. I did not know that it was that healthy. That is awesome. Yeah, it's fantastic for you. Eating the heart of an animal is better than anything you'll ever eat. It's better than any meat. Any meat, any steak, any pork chop, any chicken fillet, anything you eat, the heart of any animal, whether it be a raccoon or a wolf or a deer, it's better for you. That is awesome to know. Because I, I think a lot of people too, especially if, they, if they're if they open to trying healthier things, have probably thrown this stuff away and never even thought about whether or not there is nutritional value in it. And it seems like there's a whole lot. In fact, if you look back, the Mongols who conquered China, that was one thing that they did was they would drink the blood of the animals that they preyed upon because of the, the sodium content, the, the uh, hydration content, and the protein. That the protein, hydration, and sodium from blood during, during warfare was the best thing they could ask for. It's like the superpower. Can't that energy. make species to species viruses though a real problem? Yeah. We're going to cook up. I had rather eat heart than maggots. Um, I also have CBS News on there as we're doing our spring cleaning. Uh, for those that are more used to the political uh, side of what we do, Department of Homeland Security, laptops, phones can be searched on searched only based on hunches CBS news this is awful news Kyle the US border agents should continue to be allowed to search a traveler's laptop cell phone and other electronic device to keep copies of any data on them based on no more than a hunch according to the internal homeland security department study it says it contends that limiting such searches would prevent the US from detecting child pornographers or terrorists and expose the government to lawsuits. Well, because us and child pornographers are the biggest threat that are on the planet, Sam, you know. <laughs> I mean, the biggest threats on the planet are people like you and me and people who take pictures of little kids, which, don't get me wrong, I'm not defending pedophiles. I'm not defending people who take pictures of little kids. But... Those aren't people who are going to kill 100 people with a bomb. <laughs> no, no, they're not. And they're talking about how, if you read a little further into the article about thumb drives and stuff, at what point are they going to want to be looking at these thumb drives? I will say this, though. I love to give viewers the way around to any given mess. And this, I think, is the most awesome way to get around this in terms of... Let's say, you know, you have nude pictures of you and your girlfriend and, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you're moving, you're whatever, you're going... To Which, by the way, is much more likely than you having pictures of yes. a child. Yes, and thank God there's not, you know, there's not a majority of pedophiles running around, thank God. Um, you take the pictures of you and your wife and you send them ahead of where you're going. Send it to the hotel prior to, you know, to, so that, you know, it'll be there when you get there. Tell the desk you have a package coming. Do things that way. And, I mean, I know they, they can go through your mail, but chances are they probably won't, at least not at this time. Now, you could be watching this a year from now, and that yeah, could be the it. guy at the checkpoint has no fucking idea, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's, that's your only hope, because it looks like they're going to try to do this over and over and over and over again. It says, well, that's an idea that I've had, Sam, is to uh, everybody just send videos of your daily life to the NSA. Just send them everything. Just send them then you cooking ramen noodles, you doing your laundry, you doing the dishes, you cleaning your apartment or condo or whatever you live no, in. No, I know. I send mean, the pictures of everything. I mean sending the jump drive ahead of you. 
So you say say I'm going to be going. You're in you're in near Chicago. I'm going to be going to Chicago, and let's pretend that's another country. I don't want them to go through my laptops and everything because I have personal things in there. So I'll send the jump drive in the mail to Chicago, and then when I cross the border, they can go through whatever. I don't have any of that stuff on here. Yeah, but but good luck, and that's what I'm saying is that the people in Chicago, uh, as your hypothetical uh, destination, they don't know what you have. They haven't looked through your stuff. They're going to search you anyways. They're going to search you no matter what. And so the idea of sending them ahead of time videos of your, your lifestyle and how you live is really more comedic than anything. It's kind of sending them a video saying... Hey, fuck you! I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, this this very very sentence here it would make someone angry enough to do that. Uh, the U.S. government has always maintained that anything a person carries across the border—a backpack, a laptop, or anything hidden in a person's body—is fair game to be searched as a means of keeping drugs, child pornography, and other dangerous goods out of the country and to enforce import laws. And you know, right there, enforce import laws is what they care about the most. But well, as, Sam, I was actually thinking about coming out and visiting it, visiting you out in Ohio, and when I came, I, I, I thought I, I was thinking about bringing you some uh, child porn. And some yeah, porn. It, it's, it's so common. I mean, these the, the people that traffic in this sort of thing do not need to be stopped at the border. We have existing means of catching them, uh, and... I don't think most people are against the ones that don't infringe on rights. I don't think most of the problem that is child pornography is something that is happening because of uh, border traffic. I'm sure it does happen, but I'm sure it tends to stay within uh, one country because I, it, I think a lot of people, you know, I, I don't know how many people would travel with child porn across the border if they were a sick pervert like that. Well, that's something that me and Matt Winklejohn were talking about, which is uh, the levels of security that we have at checkpoints in the airport to where in the 90s it was totally acceptable. It was a level of security that we understood. I mean, and, and I'll say, which I said before on his show, that I believe in profiling. You know what? If you got a guy coming through your airport who's dirty and covered in rags and has a huge, huge beard and everything you say, he retorts with a paragraph of BS, yeah, search that guy, you know? But the average person, and even somebody like me, who is obviously a libertarian, anti-New World Order person, or Sam, you know, all right, the first time I go through airport security, I get it, you think I'm, I'm some sort of threat, whatever, but the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time, it's like, come on, I've been through here, you know I'm not a threat, just let me through. There's no need for it. I think that they need to come up with some kind of way where that can travel, but you know when they do, they're going to do then everything in their power to make sure that you have to pay for that. That, that will be something that has to be purchased. You can just guarantee Well, they that. already have that where you can buy, uh, uh, I forget which airline it is, but you can buy where you get, where you send in all your information, your social security number, blah, 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 and they give you a pre-check so that you don't have to go through TSA. But even that, it's like you were saying, it's still an invasion of privacy, even even though it may be more convenient, it's still an invasion of privacy to where, I'm sorry, the frequent traveler, the businessman who travels every single day, the celebrity where before you even see his passport, you know his name, the person who travels, you know, five, six times a year where the second you scan their passport, uh, a, a file comes up that tells you how often they travel, those people aren't sus suspects. Those are just normal people. The guy who's coming through once with a one-way ticket that he paid cash, that guy, go ahead and search. But Do you think if they ever... Do you think if they speed up how people go through that the uh, the terrorists, which are everywhere, but there are some, do you think that they would go ahead then and possibly try to uh, try to use any of these people or do something like that with these people? Absolutely not. If anything, I feel like if you were to lighten up security and make this a free country like it's supposed to be, then maybe you'd have less terrorist attacks because let's face it, 
Uh, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, while they may have been over other things in the past right now, they're over the fact that the United States has fucked up their countries and brought in and instituted policies that they did not want. So, on the same respect, if we were to do the same thing to the United States and stop treating United States citizens like they're guilty before they're innocent, Maybe people would have a little bit more respect for the system. Maybe people would have a little bit more respect for the security. Maybe people would have more respect for the government. I don't know. I think something has to be done because I, when I traveled the last time, I went to uh, Arkansas where uh, Christelle's family's at. There were people that looked at me strangely if if I'm, you know, because they, they actually had you in lines of whether or not, you know, the scanner, and people just walking up looking at you like you were crazy if you weren't in the scanner line. I mean, people, obviously, uh, business-suited people, frequent flyer people, uh, for those viewers that don't know, the, it's radiation, and you can only accumulate so much radiation in your body before your heart breaks down, your kidneys, before cancer, all of it. Well, and exactly, like, you, you can't take that much of it, and even uh, airline pilots in every other country, not every other country, but just about every other country, consider airline pilots uh, high radiation risk jobs, which most other countries have a minimum wage that says specifically for those people because they deal with radiation on a daily basis. But if you want to know, what does it take? What does it take to make these airlines safe if you're not scanning every person and making sure they have absolutely nothing as they enter the plane? What makes that safe? Well, I'll tell you what makes that safe, Sam. Well, it's this combined with this. And then the plane is safe. And that's how you make a plane safe, is allowing people to protect themselves. I agree in every, every possible way. 9-11 would never have happened, even if it did unfold exactly the way the 911 commission said it did. It would have never, ever happened if the pilots had been armed. Never. And exactly. And if I had been on that plane, if I, and I can't speak to like, oh, I would have done this or I would have done this. So I won't even say I. But anybody, if any American, if Americans were allowed to take this on the plane right here and the terrorist stood up with a box cutter... There you go. Well, you know they're, they're going to say the reason that. they're going to say the reason that that can't work though is because it'll take one wound to try to shoot a hole in the hall in the bathroom. Yeah. Well, what what is their answer to that, Ben? Is that they have locked up every single they locked up the cockpits, right? To where the cockpits can't be accessed by anybody else. Only the pilots can be in there. Adam Carolla, who has a podcast, he recently made a point that, all right, so Sam, you're a pilot on a plane for whatever, you know, airline. You're leaving one of the, whatever the major airports is. You're flying in the air. Everything's going fine, normal flight, and somebody takes over the plane. So you lock that lock that makes it so nobody can get in, into, the, into the cockpit. And you hear on the outside of that cockpit a terrorist with box cutter cutting into the leg or neck or arm or head or whatever of one of the stewardesses and you hear her screaming and yelling as an average citizen. Are you going to open that door? Most pilots are. So even that lock and even all the precautions they've taken don't do anything. You know what does do something, Sam? Is the average citizen locked and loaded. That's what does something. Because the average citizen, when they see that happening, realizes their life is in danger. Is going to take that person out before they get to the cop. Oh yeah, you were talking about Matt Winklejohn. What do you think happens if something like that happens and Matt Winklejohn is armed on that plane? Yeah, Matt Winklejohn is going to cock into action and he's going to take his, his 45 or his 50 or his 10 millimeter, even like me, his 380. And he's going to take that terrorist out, and then you're going to get to fucking Florida. And he's going to sit down and finish his steak dinner before the body gets cold. Exactly. Yes. So that's why, like, I, on a plane, when I'm on a plane, if I could have anybody on a plane when I'm on a plane, I would rather have every single citizen. You see that? You see that, that cartridge about to go in? I'd rather have every single citizen locked and loaded. 
I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Guys, that you're listening to the correct view, spring cleaning. Kyle with excellent points there. Kyle Phillips from the Media Speaks. Indeed. Uh, why don't you give us a break real quick? Uh, let us know about the Nitro Pack, because I tell you what, every, I, I tend to read the same things from their site, and I think my viewers are like, oh, I know what he's going to talk about. So I'll let you do it. Oh, you want me to do a, a quick Nitro Pack ad or I think we should do it. I try to do it every half hour. All right, for sure. Which Nitro Pack, for anybody watching this, this broadcast, this transmission, and who likes what we do, you like what Sam talks about, you like the, what the rest of us talk about at themediaspeaks.com, me, uh, Sam Naganji, Anthony Court, David Lake. <clears throat> the best way that you can support us is if you go to nitropacks.com and don't just type in nitropacks.com, go to the Media Speaks website, which you can see right here. And if you go right on the page right here, right to the right, you can click nitropack.com. And what are you going to get from nitropack.com? We're not just selling you some fucking sponsor that we don't care about at all, something that's not going to affect you in any way. That's my uh, ad blocking software right there. So what you can find at this website is literally everything that you need except for silver, gold, guns, and ammunition. <clears throat> uh, one day when you're sitting at home and you're complaining about the government and how everything goes, <clears throat> one day the, the mail's going to stop coming. And you're going to say, what the hell? It's a, it's a Wednesday and I didn't get any mail. And then the next day, the grocery stores are going to close and you say, what the fuck, I can't get, buy any groceries. The next day, the mail stops coming, or I already said that, the police stop patrolling the streets, you know, everything Widget. goes to hell. Edgar. There is nothing left of society, what we're talking about. This is a very real possibility, whether it be because of, you know, uh, economic collapse, monetary collapse, because of this uh, governmental collapse, because of them oversetting them, their bounds. Even if it is because of a, a virus or some sort of disease or some sort of zombie apocalypse, whatever you're worried about, everything that you need except for guns, ammunition, gold and silver, you can buy at nitropack.com. They have freeze-dried food, they have MREs, they have freeze-dried ice cream, they have first aid kits, they have dental kits, they have outdoor gear, they have tents, they have water filters, they have emergency gear, they have water filters literally going from the little can that you hold and you squeeze into your mouth down to the countertop model that you can use to filter water for an entire family. So Life saving. All your neighbors, while your neighbors are eating their fucking children and feeding off the people who are dying slowly but surely, you're going to be boarded up in your house with products from nitropack.com. You're going to be just fine. You're not going to be eating your children. You're not going to be pulling your teeth out. You're not going to be eating your belt after you soak it in salt water for three days. You're not going to be doing those things. You're going to be living just fine because you were prepared, you knew what was coming, and you visited nitropack.com. So if you like uh, the correct views, if you like the media speaks, check out this website. Look at what they have. Please and do. you know what? If you don't see anything that you think that you absolutely need in that situation, well, then don't fucking buy it. But I guarantee that you will. So that's nitropack.com through the media. And thank you, Sam, for letting us do that. Of course. It needed to be done. And like I always say, too, tents, things like that, it's the summer. It's finally here. Uh, get your camping supplies, even if you're not a prepper. Um, we were talking about radiation in the skies, a little bit of different radiation. Uh, Infowars Donna Anderson, Texas woman, says, We are the people, and we don't want your smart meters. And she won. Sheila Hemp here owns a wellness shop in Brady, Texas. And she's well aware that even small doses of radiation can have harmful effects on the human body. So when the city council announced that they were going to install smart meters on homes all over citywide, she knew that she had to do something for the people of Brady would be facing serious health issues. She called in, I guess she called in on InfoWars on May 8th and was talking to Alice. Alex, she said, I'm just a person who says no. Um... They, she talked about the radiation emitted by light bulbs, baby monitors, cell phones, and Wi-Fi. The problem, though, more than anything with these smart meters, and as you go into the article, I did not know this. Your, your, your mind cannot differentiate between daylight 
and the signal that is being sent from the smart meter. So, and I sleep in like absolute total darkness. If, if you could turn all the lights out you want, your brain is going to think that it is sunny all the time once you have a smart meter attached to your house. That's, That's the same problem that you have with uh, TVs. The TVs have a flicker rate, which most people don't. Oh, did you run the flicker rate does the exact same thing as the smart drain in the fight or flight mode. And fight or flight mode makes you so that if anybody interrupts you or starts talking to you, you're in a much more apprehensive mode than you would be normally if you're reading a book or if you were listening to music. It puts you in a mode that is ready to kill. And that's what smart meters do, that's what TVs do, that's what pretty much all of the, the mainstream media outlets do these days. And whether that's uh, on purpose or not is debatable, but it does do that. And I never remember to shut my Wi-Fi off. I don't know if you do or not, but I never remember. I have a button on my... I bought a router specifically, the router that I bought. I bought it specifically because it has a button to turn the Wi-Fi off. And, yeah, I rarely do it. I, it's, it's very uncommon for me to turn that actually off, but those waves are always traveling through my brain. Mm -hmm. And I think it's nice that this woman actually, I mean, just a regular person who owns a business, um, it says here, get a petition together. It requires 5% of registered voters, or 20,000, whichever is less. You, by the petition, change your city charter to get fluoride out of your water. Your city charter says that you as a resident have the right to remove any product or service that you deem harmful to your person, property, or privacy. That's another big one. Regardless of what the elected officials say. Uh, that they don't think there's a problem. We are the people, and this is power. And I think it's great. I mean, because everyone thinks you have to be an Alex Jones or something in order to do this. And she managed to stop it, and it looks like a rather well-to-do community. I would like to see a company which I would, I would totally do it. I'm not a just, you know, say and not do person. I just don't have the technology and the technological know-how to do it. But I would love to see some techie person come out with some sort of uh, thing that you can put over your power outlets that blocks uh, what type of energy it's outputting from your smart meters. If somebody was to do that, make some sort of thing that you can put over all of your outlets that blocks that information, I think that would be a great thing. I wish I could do it myself, but I just don't have the know-how. I, I wondered about something like that before. I don't know if I'll get to the article because I don't know which one it was in. But it says, uh, among other things, that there, there, there are chips and installations that the government mandates that have to be in cell phones that allow them to get the data out of it. Why yeah, is it? Why is, yeah. Why hasn't some tech-minded libertarian made devices that don't have that chip? Why? Well, exactly. Well, there is a company. There is a company out there. I forget their name, but what they're making is it's called like the Fairphone. That's that's the name of the phone. I remember that. It's called the Fairphone. And what it is is it's an Android phone. It's only 3G, which kind of sucks. But it's a phone that everything about this phone and everything about the net the network that it's provided on is fair. There's no people in China jumping off buildings. There's no companies that are selling your information to the NSA. It's all private, it's all fair use, it's all fair trade, to where every aspect of this phone being made is made in a way that you don't have to feel conscientious about. There is one company, but we need more. I had not heard of even the one company, so I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned it. Because um, now what's their service like? Do you have any idea or does it I didn't say in the article? Um from what I've been told it's a it's a it's a 3G phone and I don't know what network it's on. Which 3G isn't awesome, but it's not the worst. It's it's uh, the way that it works pretty much is that everybody has 3G coverage and general areas. You know, there's splotches out there that have 4G, but for the average person operating on a 3G network is not any different than what you're doing right now. That is very good to know, too. So, fair phone. I mean, yeah, the answer to the question that I had is right there. I'm going to look into it. I'm on page plus, which is very good. I mean, I can catch them just about everywhere I go, mountains in Virginia. 
However, I think they use Verizon towers, and we all know that uh, we all know what President Obama has now done to, two, among other companies, Verizon. <laughs> and there was some good news to come. And this is from the Hill, not not like not 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 an underground uh, publication. The Hill. Cruz once quotes to abolish the IRS. They're talking about it now on mainstream outlets. Senator Ted Cruz on Monday pressed for eliminating the Internal Revenue Service amid the scandal over the agency's targeting of conservative political groups. Cruz called for replacing the current system with a flat tax. I think we ought to abolish the IRS and instead move to a simple flat tax where the average American can fill our taxes out on a postcard, put down how much you earn, put down a deduction for charitable contributions, for home mortgage, and how much you owe, he said. It ought to be just that simple as a one-page postcard and take agents and the bureaucracy out of Washington and limit the power of government. I think that is great, particularly not just that Ted Cruz said it, but that it's picked up by the hell. Well, you see, that that is awesome that the Hill picked that up and that they did, they're they at least doing something within the battle. <clears throat> but for me, the biggest, when it comes to taxes, the biggest thing for me, and this is coming from somebody who rents. I'm trying to save up enough money to own, but I don't own right now. I rent. But the biggest fallacy of the United States government is... The, uh, the the property tax. If you own a piece of property, that's yours. You own it. That's, that's as simple as that, right? No, because if you can't pay your property tax, they're going to take that shit from you. And I know a lot of people who kind of fall into that care category where it's just like, I just want to live, live my life, own my land, and kind of not bother with your stuff. But, well, you have to bother with our stuff because you're paying the taxes. Wow. And if you don't, we're going to come take that shit. And there's a lot of uh, other instances. I was watching a documentary the other day, and it mentioned in it that, uh, let's say, the difference between both of my hands here are 100 miles. All the people along this 100-mile stretch have what's called mineral rights. So if they find oil or gold or something under there, they have to, they have to you know, the person that owns the property has the rights. But what they're doing is they're drilling the oil and gas or whatever out from under 50 or 100 miles away undercutting all the property uh, rights of the people that live within that stretch. Yeah, they, they, they suck it out from a different location, and then there's nothing you can do about it. They suck it out from underneath your land, even though that was your land, you had the rights to it. They're sucking out your property, and go ahead and try and sue them and see what happens. And I think the more these things accumulate, the more we realize that you know, the, if they're going to just suck, suck the, prop, the, the value up from under our properties, then maybe it is a better idea to get rid of the IRS altogether. Why are we paying these people all this money so that they can do pretty much whatever they want to anyway? Well, exactly. And one thing that I recommend, just not even on the IRS uh, and the tax front, but on a lot of different fronts, is I think everybody should buy a gun. Every single person on the planet, whether you buy just like a little 22, whatever, you need to buy a gun because these are the types of things that they're trying to do. And when it comes to the day where you see your favorite politician go on TV and say, okay, well, I think it's a good idea to ban guns. Well, at least you got one. At least you can protect your property. And at least when they come to your house to try and confiscate it, you can say, oh, I don't have one and still have one and at least protect your property because that's the most important thing on the planet is protect if there if you don't have a right to property what do you have a right to and that's why like i've been saying i just owned a gun because I, I just bought a gun because i think it's the most important thing so i just bought a little 380 which is something that i can protect my property with and i can protect my people with and i can make sure that the irs isn't coming on my property and, and, and taking my shit and taking my neighbor's shit. So I recommend, even if something just, just as small as this little guy right here, just get something. Make sure that when the IRS comes to your house, in the least, they know that you're, you're an armed individual, you're an informed individual, and you know what you're up against. So that, I, I can't trust enough. Go buy a gun. I, I agree, because I think, uh, you know, they start 
they start going, it's kind of like how the DUI laws have lost all their punch. Everybody knows somebody that got a DUI when they were sober. If they start shooting people that, you know, people are like, hey, wait a minute, I know him. I've known him for 20 years. He wasn't a violent person. He just wanted to keep his gun. It will eliminate a lot of the power they have to mentally word things and manipulate things in such a way that the masses fall for it as easily as well. Well, exactly, and I mean, it's on the same level, like, you mentioned the DUI laws. If you know somebody who you were, like, 